Good to have you back on uh, The Breakfast this morning here on PLOS TV Africa. We are going to be going through the major stories making headlines now. And of course, we'll say good morning to Mr. Chris Wandu. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. Always a pleasure. We're going to start with stories from the uh, uh, Nigerian Tribune this morning. Let's see what we can find here. Or let's say go to the punch instead. Uh, the big one you can find on the point this morning is going to be on your screen in a few seconds. It says, uh, division among bandits uh, delays abducted Niger schoolboys release. Once again, division among bandits delays abducted Niger schoolboys release. Kidnappers still negotiating among themselves. The good and the bad one, says the negotiator. Afeni Fere or Haneze, Middle Belt Forum, Carpet Gumi for advocating blanket amnesty. And also, why military can't confront bandits Islamic cleric uh, held talks with, says ex-DSS director. All right. Petrol landing costs jumps to 186 naira. Oil hit $64 per barrel. And family and friends mourn Nigerian Air Force pilots and others recount victims' journeys. That's a very sad incident uh, a few days ago. Also on the punch this morning, Southwest governors must ensure Amotekun carries sophisticated weapons. That is from dawn. And um, also three are arraigned for invading the palace and beating up Oshun Monarch. Senate screens service chiefs behind closed doors today. And the drama in um, um, Imo State continues. Okorocha boasts of presidential bid. 14x aides get 70 million naira ba uh, bail. Senate plans NDDC chiefs arrest over $6.2 billion COVID-19 palliatives and also fleeing residents Sean Ogun uh, palliatives remain in refugee camps. Uh, we're going to stop there and, uh, of course, go, go straight to Mr. Chris Wandu. Let's uh, see where you want to start from this morning. Oh, definitely the major headline, uh, the Bishop Among Panantis is adopted. Niger school boys release. Um, it's quite unfortunate uh, that we've got into this point uh, in our lives. Um, now we are now talking of negotiation with bandits rather than uh, finding a way of eliminating bandits uh, totally. Well, uh, I continue to ask myself, how did we get here? Um, but um, it's quite unfortunate because we saw some of us saw this coming. Uh, but probably our politicians don't seem to see what some of us are seeing. You know, politicians have a way, they, they are entirely uh, an entire species different from um, those of us. Uh, uh, they are the ones that see tomorrow, we don't see. Um, but uh, it's quite unfortunate, as I said, because what we have not done or what we are doing is to elevate the issue of banditry to another level. Um, you can see the utterance is coming from some governors of, this, uh, of the north. Uh, we are they are indirectly uh, supporting uh, the bandits or trying to play down the, um, the roles being played by these uh, criminals. Uh, some of them are saying that oh, they are bandits are not some bandits are not criminals. Uh, we are getting um, um, here and there getting talk from. Um, some leaders of the north who think that uh, we should just go into negotiation with uh, bandits and kidnappers. Um, Alaji Guemi or Sheikh Gumi is doing this going here and there. And this is not taking a more frightful uh, um, dimension. And the, 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 the terrible thing for me here is the, the security agencies now seem to have been disarmed totally uh, because they don't have the capacity now to be able to confront um, these bandits are able to um, get this issue sorted out once and for all, because by uh, through the utterances of the um, leaders of the north, from the north, the governors and the rest of them, it will be difficult for any security chief to try to confront the bandit, and that is where we are. Um, it is becoming kidnapped too many, and um, this is not the first time we are having children being abducted. Uh, I don't know; I, I've lost count, and. Um, uh, now we are talking about how to negotiate, how much is to be negotiated from what we are hearing here and there. And that in itself is a very, very terrible situation for a country like ours. And I can, you can rest assured that after these children are released, within the next few weeks or months, another set will be kidnapped or abducted. 
um, abduction and kidnapping of children have become uh, a lucrative business in the north, it's and a, that's scary, why it's on trust. It's a very um, worrisome uh, development from you know where we're coming from, and of course, uh, looking at you know, like you mentioned, we've got to a place where. You know, we now are comfortable, you know, negotiating and, you know, having conversations about, you know, what the bandits want and which bandit is happy and which one has eaten this morning. And it's, it's not it's not a good look um, on us and our security agents. Um, but hopefully, you know, it might come up in another paper. Let's also get you to speak on the 6.2 billion naira palliative fraud. The Senate has uh, maxed uh, that uh, Ponde and uh, the head of the NDDC Interim Management Committee be arrested. Um, what are your thoughts on that investigation and uh, the Senate hearing on that? Uh, I'm sure you mean defending uh, on the uh, defending uh, <laughs> from our acting MD. <laughs> it's quite unfortunate that, uh, that uh, we've got into this. But we saw this coming uh, because when you watch the, the proceeding during the pro and the drama that went through, uh, we had the former acting. I don't know. I think it's former acting MD now uh, try to was trying to faint or he fainted and the rest of the and drama that and at the end of it all the house of reps or was it senate then now said uh, no uh, we are not going to have this probe in the opening in address i knew that this would be swept under the cap and uh, it's just quite unfortunate that um, the uh, the alleged uh, culprits uh, in this uh, so-called fraud have not been brought to book and subsequent attempt by the national assembly to get them to come and give readings or uh give some uh, insight as to what happened at the so it's within the, the constitutional right of the of the senate or national assembly to summon anybody and anybody that refused to or them it is within they, they have the right uh, to issue a bad a bad warrant but the fact is that they have done their bit it is now left for the executive which controls the uh, security agencies of peace to make sure that uh, these people are brought to the national assembly to account for their misdeeds so let's see how this pans out in the next few days, whether the executive will raise up a right location by making sure that they are arrested and brought to national side. All right. Okay. Turning now to the Nigerian Tribune, we see this same story. And uh, the Tribune writes it as uh, alleged 6.25 billion naira fraud. Senate issues warrant of arrest on NDDC boss. And the big story here on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune says Fulani. Nomad fighting ethnic war, and that's according to Sheikh Gumi, feels his existence threatened. Gumi explains forceful invasion, 14 Okorocha's aides arraigned, granted 70 million naira bail. Southeast governors weighed into Uzodimma Okorocha impasse. Herders must respect Benmi law or go to Bauchi to carry AK 47, and that's according to Autumn. Hold Bauchi governor responsible if anything happens to me, he says. Rising food prices, Nigeria sitting on keg of gunpowder, and that according to experts, and we see other groups preferring solutions to that. PTF is saying Nigeria will soon receive 4 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Gunmen abduct Uniport lecturer, Rivers traditional ruler, Q police inspector, sets van ablaze in Akwaibom. Two trillion naira needed to fix rot in federal polytechnics, and that's according to ASUP. And uh, a few more here on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Lawan is saying FG to restore peace and order all over the country within two months. Makinde Fayashe may hold parallel zonal PDP congresses. Olu, security forces arrest 20 IPOB militias and alleged 69.4 billion naira debt, court vacates order on Jimo Ibrahim's assets. Mr. Nwadu, which of the stories would you like to speak on at the moment? Well, um, the, the Tribune front page is well loaded uh, with several, <laughs> <laughs> several headlines. Uh, it, it, uh, that's their style, and, uh, which is a good one. Try to load the front page as many as uh, stories as possible, so you just make your choice. But let me quickly talk about the situation in Imo State, which is my state, unfortunately. Um, the they granted uh, aid to the former governor, uh, Richard Sokrata. Well, that is um, that is understandable. But what my my worry is that I I was 
uh, amazed uh, and powerful by the, uh, the action taken by the former governor to go and unseal uh, the, uh, the seal uh, put on the, uh, on, on, on the estate. Well, you may just um, argue with the fact that uh, was there a valid court, um, uh, a, a court uh, order for that place, for the place to be sealed? Well, uh, that is neither here nor there for me. Um, but I know that there was a, a panel of inquiry that was set up by the governor, and they, they come, came up with recommendation. I don't know whether that recommendation has the force of law for the place to be locked up. But even if it, 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 it didn't, and the governor uh, did wrong by locking up the estate. It is not within the uh, former governor to just move in there with uh, some of his data and break up. The best he could have done that is sacrifice his good court and get some kind of uh, uh, an interim injunction restraining the governor from uh, doing what he did. But now we are having two lawless people, that's how we use, uh, I, I can say, uh, try to engage in uh, a power of show or show of power, whichever way we call it. And at the end of it, what happened? Some of them, some aides were wounded and rest. But good enough. I hope uh, good reasoning will not say it now. I heard that some political, their political friends are trying to sort that out and make sure that uh, that is taken care of. That is that for me. Then we are, we, uh, let's go to Benue State, where the, the war of words between the governor of Benue State, um, Autumn, and the Bauchi State governor is still raging. Um, it's quite unfortunate, uh, as I said earlier on when I was reviewing from the first paper. Uh, where I said that some of our leaders seem to tactically or indirectly supporting what is happening uh, by supporting the, the uh, uh, Fulani headsmen. Let's not even, let's not even use the word Fulani headsmen. Let's look at bandits. Um, so, where um, the Bauchi governor said that um, they are free to hold on to AK 47 and the rest of them. But uh, it's quite unfortunate, and the rate at which we are going. This might end up where we, we seem to be moving towards ethnic, uh, with this of common ethnic coloration to this um, insurgency, and that in itself will do no, none of us a, a word of good. I think our leaders should be very, very, uh, very careful with their choice of words, and um, so that we don't get to aggravate. Let us holistically, as leaders, uh, face this monster squarely rather than following it from divided uh, uh, angles. All right. Uh, rising. Yes, rising food, just briefly, rising food prices, that is no news. Uh, we've been having that for, for some time now, and it does seems to be a bit. All right, I will quickly speak on the uh, um, case in Orlu. It says the security forces arrest 20 IPOB militias. Um, what's your response to that? Well, um, the, 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 the security agencies of uh, government have a right to restore uh, uh, peace to any part of the country where we see, where they feel or seem to be some level of insecurity. Uh, the first of between iPod or uh, Eastern Security Network, uh, ESN, uh, or whatever you call it, uh, or, or low is a uh, uh, worrisome um, phenomenon to me. Uh, but the fact remains that um, well, are we, are we, if we are doing as much as we are doing or in or low, in other parts of the country, so are you did not? I don't think we will be where we are today. Um, so uh, without, uh, without um, I, um, supporting what um, ESN is doing in um, Olu or so, but I think we should also move quickly into the northeast and the northwest and make sure that um, bandits uh, that are also marauding and killing people across the north are, are well taken care of and um, eliminated rather than what we are doing now. Um, but I think the Olu issue is now getting resolved, uh, and the military seems to have stemmed it back. Right? And there's also some kind of social media work going on where all sorts of fake news is coming in from that angle and left of there. I think that issue should be handled uh, very, very carefully so that we don't tend to escalate what is already a tense situation uh, in the all country. Right. All right, lastly, on the Nigerian Tribune, the top story here says Fulani Nomad fighting ethnic war. And we've seen Shegumi in recent time, you know, visiting bandits and terrorists and, you know, coming out with statements that they're peaceful people, they're not out to hurt anybody. And here on the Nigerian Tribune, he's saying they're simply fighting an ethnic war only with people who, you know, have offended them, only with people who have destroyed their cattle only with people who have done something bad to them and it's just them trying to revenge. I don't know what you think about the statements from Gumi. 
Um, at a point, I don't want to get into the insinuations of statement coming from Sheikh Lumi. He used to be somebody I used to respect very well in the past, but his uh, antecedents of our president doesn't seem to point to give me this level of comfort. Uh, you are talking of ethnic war, fighting, and people fight. Let us even take it from this point. Those that he went to, uh, he went to Zampara, and those that he went to negotiate with in Niger states that kidnapped, uh, that abducted the children. What war are they fighting? Are they fighting ethnic war? Uh, those, the children you are talking about, are they not from the north? So who are they fighting by picking up those children? So that's why I feel that he's speaking from both sides of his mouth and trying to make himself relevant. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would be very, very careful in trying to give some kind of endorsement to certain individuals who, uh, as it were, are going now. That is the kind. Of, that is also the kind of issue. We, if you remember, we, well, we used to have a mama cast um, mama. What was it now? Boko Boko Haram. Haram. Yes. You remember vividly the woman? Yes. And then what happened later? Now she's been charged for fraud and the rest of them. Uh, I think we should be very, very careful in trying to put some kind of. Uh, 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 endorse certain uh, certain individuals who, for whatever reason, I wouldn't use it for selfish reasons, are trying to make themselves relevant. What we need is a total police war against banditry, kidnapping, uh, and all sorts of uh, terrorism going on across the country. Whichever okay. we Let, get let's move to let's move to the, the Guardian. Uh, you know, it almost seems like uh, in Nigeria today we are talking. You know, bandits have feelings too. Let's you know be considerate. But on the Guardian this morning. Trade restrictions, climate change, threaten Nigeria's food supply. NIMET's uh, forecast for grounds food insecurity. We can also see on The Guardian this morning, death won't deter, says the uh, Nigerian Air Force. And also Nigeria won't purchase vaccines from private organizations, says the federal government. Uh, Gbajibar Mila laments poor performance of extended capital budget. And gunmen kidnap monarch, lecturer, attack journalist in River State. Uh, one or two others. Labor seeks openness in determining full price template. All right, I think th those are the only ones on the Guardian this morning. Uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, I think we can just uh, squeeze your thoughts in on one of these stories before we go. Yeah, okay. yeah I'll take on the, the death of um, the officer, the NAF officers, squad unfortunate. Uh, he got a bless and received their souls. Um, but they're getting a bit worse of me, too. Uh, in the last one year, there about, I, don't, I think we've had about two uh, crashes, uh, if I'm very, very sure. One for the military, military then also the one that, uh, that helicopter that crashed in Lagos, if you remember. Um, I think it's time for us to start looking at our education industry and make sure that, uh, so, you know, there used to be a time that we used to have these various crashes there and there. And for a while, um, that's all but I don't see it. It's becoming too coincidental that we're having such I think those in the aviation industry and in Nigeria should start looking at uh, that angle as if there's anything we're getting wrong. If we're not looking at what we're so that we can be able to stem the tide before something much more bigger than this happens. Uh, but my heart goes out to the Nigeria Force and families of the deceased. All right. Chris Wandu, it's always a pleasure listening to you and uh, your thoughts on these major stories. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, thank you and have a thank great day. Much. Thank you very much. Do have a great day. You too, absolutely. And once right. again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you're probably going to tweet this, you know, that, you know, it feels like we're doing a bandits have feelings. To, <laughs> hashtag, uh, right? Hashtag, you know, and that, that's what it, it almost seems like, you know, mm. and um, I, I would expect that, you know, if we're actually going to be negotiating with kidnappers and bandits, you know, there, there should be an, uh, an, an army negotiator. There should be uh, a negotiator from our security agency is not just anybody exactly. who walks into the forest freely. You know, and if it is so easy for him to walk into those spaces, then it should also be very easy for the Nigerian army and for security agencies to, to infiltrate exactly. um, um, the bandits' camps. My you know, thoughts it, exactly. It should be that easy, even if you're not going to, you know, immediately go there and bomb everywhere. But at least infiltrate them, plant somebody in, in the midst of them. So. These are not good signs as to, you know, where we are with regards to our fight against, you know, insurgencies, you know, insecurity and all of that. Um, and, you know, we should not somehow just suddenly wake up to see a shake, um, you know, going back and forth with, um, you know, with, with bandits every time there's a kidnap. Yes. I mean, if we have someone like that to, who communicates with them regularly, who's become sort of like a spokesman every other day in the news, we see Gumi with a word from the bandits. That just shows how easy they are to access, isn't, doesn't it? Yeah. That should be bait, in my opinion. I keep wondering, why don't we use Shigumi 
us people like that to actually capture these bandits, to actually set an ambush for them? Why do we keep coming back with a word? Why don't we come back with dozens and dozens of terrorists arrested? It's also... Or maybe that it, it's, there's definitely more than meets the eye. Absolutely. That's what yeah. I was going to say. You know, it's, it's very, very likely that there's a lot of these things or the you know, details of this whole um, issue that we don't know about yet and we're not, we're not yes. clear on yet. So... Hopefully, we'll find out. Indeed. So, yes, we'll now turn to Talk Today in History. We'll be looking at two key events in politics and health. Do stay with us.